From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're going to offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. The word millet must be familiar to all of us, yet only a few people know about its nutritional benefits. The remarkable food grain millet, which can withstand harsh weather and potentially guarantee food security in India. It is currently dominating the global market and is growing at a steady pace. In a bid to spread awareness and develop a market for millet-based products, the authorities in India's Manipur recently organized a two-day event in Imphal City, partnering with the Central Agriculture University and National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. Take a look. India, an agro-based country with the agriculture industry accounting for 20% of the GDP of the nation, continues to grow, proving its potential on the global platform with its high-value nutritional products. Millet is one such agricultural product of India that is now gaining recognition worldwide for its high nutritional value and easy to tolerate temperature conditions. Today, India is dwelling on the path to leading the world as a key player in the global supply chain of millet and its value-added products. According to a PIB report, India exported 64 million US dollars worth of millets from 2021-22. Moreover, the Indian government is currently supporting more than 200 startups to develop a range of millet-based, ready-to-eat, ready-to-cook and ready-to-serve products for all age groups. In this spirit, to promote the consumption and sales of millets and millet-based products, the northeastern state of Manipur recently organized a two-day exhibition in its capital city of Imphal. As part of the theme of this convention, so we are all focusing on the uh, millet products. So millet is the one, so uh, we having a lot of uh, health benefit as compared with the uh, other uh, cereals like uh, rice and wheat. In Manipur, in the industries, the food industries, the only industry will be sustainable because everybody needs the food this one. So that's why the whatever we grow food here in the Manipur, it can be pre make it converted to the value addition. And once the value addition comes, the industry, whatever entrepreneurs, so they will be surviving and they will em employ the people. We are doing this training to the local entrepreneurs. Recently, we have given the training around 41 entrepreneurs, and most of the here in this in the exhibition also. Millet has been a staple food in many cultures for thousands of years and has gained popularity due to its high nutritional value and sustainability. The event, which was held in collaboration with Central Agricultural University, and the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights aimed to provide a platform for dialogue among all stakeholders to promote the use of millets in improving child nutrition and develop collaborative work. The participants also witnessed cooking and offered millet-based food to people in order to promote a healthy lifestyle. हमारे पास 16 स्टॉल है जिसमें से हमने 8 स्टॉल है जो प्राइवेट एजेंसी है जो मिलेट्स पे काम कर रही है अपने प्रोडक्ट बना रही है उसके सेल आया है और 8 स्टॉल है जो डिफरेंट शेवन स्टेट के हमारी कॉलेजेस है जैसे होम साइंस कॉलेज तुरा में है पासीघाट अरुणाचल में कॉलेज है हमारा मेघालय में कॉलेज है हमारा A few months ago in 2023 a similar effort was made by the Indian government to raise awareness and create a millet-based market for its products in Indonesia in collaboration with the Indian Mission to ASEAN. 
During the event, both Indian and Indonesian entrepreneurs were found educating and exhibiting their millet-based products to the people who visited their stalls. Moreover, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also emphasized strengthening the production of nutritional grains, including millet, to ensure food security in India during the G20 summit last year. ये जो आसियान इंडिया मिलेट फेस्टिवल है ये जो हम इंटरनेशनल ईयर ऑफ मिलेट जो सेलिब्रेट कर रहे हैं उसके अंतर्गत हो रहा है और जैसे कि आप जानते हैं आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी यहाँ पे सात सितंबर को आए थे आसियान इंडिया समिट के लिए तो एक जॉइंट स्टेटमेंट जो था वो फूड सिक्योरिटी के बारे में था और आप देखिए अभी दो महीने पहले हमने जॉइंट स्टेटमेंट अभी इशू किया है अडॉप्ट किया है हमारे लीडर्स ने और उसके बाद हम यहाँ पे मिलेट फेस्टिवल लगा रहे हैं यू नो इसकी न्यूट्रिशियस वैल्यू है इसका यू नो हमारी लीडरशिप बार बार कहती कि वाटर कंजम्पन कम है इसका कार्बन फुटप्रिंट कम है The world has always been unaware of the value of this incredibly nutrient dense grain. Due to a lack of knowledge about millet's nutritional benefits, it was long neglected and underutilized. Today, nevertheless, the millet has made a distinctive mark for itself on the international scene because of the coordinated efforts of the Indian government. Over the three decades, the Dargah of Hazrat Shah Farhat Sahib has flourished in the heart of India's capital city, New Delhi. The Dargah of the Sufi saint not only stands as a beacon of love and interfaith, but also belief that wishes are fulfilled here. Take a look. Sufi shrines have always been a common destination for devout groups from different religious backgrounds. For decades, they have cultivated and nurtured a friendly bond among communities, maintaining peace and harmony intact in society. Situated in the heart of India's capital, New Delhi, the Dargah of Hazrat Shah Farhat Sahib stands as a symbol of communal harmony. People from all walks of life flock to the shrine every day to pay their sincere tributes to the Sufi saint and seek his blessings. The dargah is said to be 300 years old. Hum bachpan se yahan se aa rahe hain bachpan se yahi pale hain yahi bade hue hain yahi hamare bacche bhi ho gaye hain aur jo bahut sachi dargah hai aur jo bhi mannat hum mangte hain puri ho jati hai ab bete ki ek mannat mangi hai Allah puri kare to hum aake yahan jo humse ho sakega hum karenge. The decades old dargah is a diverse tapestry of devotees Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians all come together to offer prayers to seek blessings from the revered saint while soaking in this spiritual atmosphere. Devotees often find the Islamic architecture very peaceful. Therefore, they come to meditate and seek solace while connecting with their inner selves. वैसे तो मैं बचपन से वालिद साहब के साथ रहा लेकिन सन 2007 में वालिद साहब का जो इंतकाल हुआ उसके बाद से मालिक ने मुझे यहाँ खदमत के लिए नवाजा है और खदमत अंजाम दे मेरे से ले रहे हैं खदमत Additionally, the Sufi structure imparts Islamic education to kids while also holding a free meal service or langar regularly for devotees. Devotees believe the saint bestows his blessings equally on everyone who comes with a sincere heart and that all their wishes are fulfilled. मानते तो बहुत हैं जब भी तो आ रहे हैं हमारे सारे काम यहीं से हुए हैं जितने भी हमारे काम हुए हैं सरकार की इतनी नजरा करम है कि मेरे को 2019 में ब्रेन स्ट्रोक आया था वो माशाल्लाह से बिल्कुल ठीक हो गया मेरे हाथ पैर बिल्कुल सही है पैरालाइज हो गया था मैं आधी बॉडी बिल्कुल मेरे गिर गया था जैसे बिल्डिंग गिर जाती है और आज माशाल्लाह से बिल्कुल ठीक हूँ और जो ख्वाहिश है वो सरकार की नजर क्रम से वो भी पूरी होती जा रही है फॉर सेंचुरीज सूफी आर्किटेक्चर हैज ऑलवेज सर्व एज अ सिम्बल ऑफ कम्यूनल हार्मनी nurturing an enduring connection among diverse communities and promoting a sense of brotherhood in society 
And now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Bollywood celebrities including Salman Khan and Ranveer Singh rocked Indian billionaire Mukesh Ambani's son Anand's pre-wedding bash with enthralling performances. The three-day pre-wedding jamboree which started on Friday in a township in Jamnagar near Reliance's main oil refinery in the western state of Gujarat had artists like Rihanna and American magician David Blaine performing at the festivities. Bollywood actor Ranveer Singh, who is expecting his first child with actress Deepika Padukone, shook a leg with her on the stage. The event included a high-profile guest list and was attended by the likes of Bill Gates, Meta's Mark Zuckerberg, fellow Indian billionaires Gautam Adani and Kumar Mangalam Birla, as well as many high-profile cricketers and Bollywood stars including Shah Rukh Khan and Salman Khan. Running India's first gender-inclusive library, Priya Babu, a transgender woman from southern Madurai city, said that it is crucial to provide accessible education to non-binary persons. So, if you look at this, there is a trans library in India. In the first place, there is a library in India. 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 There is a paper clipping. There is a court. 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 The library was established as a part of the Transgender Resource Center to keep a record of research documents and papers written exclusively for the transgender population. The center also organizes study materials for transgender students who have dropped out of college due to societal barriers but wish to continue their studies. Opened in 2016, the library is the first of its kind and has been recognized by the state government. India has about 2 million transgender people according to the 2011 census. And although the Supreme Court ruled in 2014 that transgender people have equal rights under the law, they are often shunned and many survive through begging or sex work. Hundreds of tourists gathered at Sangam, the confluence of rivers Ganga, Yamuna and mythical Saraswati, which is considered holy by the Hindus, in northern Prayagraj city to catch a glimpse of the flock of migratory seabirds. Birds are very happy to see it. It's very good to see it. I don't know how many videos are going to be released and how many photos are going to be released. Tourists were seen taking photographs and feeding the birds including ground-headed gulls and Huglin's gulls, among others, while riding on the river boat. The water body becomes a perfect location for the gulls which flock in huge numbers to nest during this time of the year. Millions of birds migrate every year to different parts of India to escape the harsh weather in northern Europe and Asia. However, experts believe that changing weather patterns and overheated water bodies pose a threat to the vast flocks of migrating birds that use wetlands and marsh areas as a station between Africa and Europe. Moving on. As cats and dogs become a part and parcel of every household in Indian society, Pet grooming and pet care businesses see a subsequent boost leading to the emergence of several entrepreneurs with pet-related products in diverse ranges. Let's delve into the market and society have evolved and how the trend has fueled the growth of the country's pet care industry. Take a look. The trend of keeping pets has risen in Indian families with dogs and cats being cherished as family members. They are taken care of as kids at home. Subsequently, the trend has fueled the rapid growth of the country's pet care market. 
As per the recent data and report, the Indian pet care industry is expected to reach Rs 21,000 crore by 2032. Now, let's introduce you to a Delhi-based resident Ashwit and his pet Fiona. Ashwit is fond of keeping pets since childhood. He has a Siberian Husky, which is a healthy breed on which he spends around 5,000 every month. To take good care of Fiona, he uses expensive brands for her food and grooming. बचपन से ही मुझे पेट्स का बहुत शौक था। मैंने आपको गिनी पिक्स पाले हैं, मैंने खरगोश पाले हैं, मैंने इवन कॉकरटील बर्ड होता है, वो भी पाले। अब जाके मैं डॉग पे रुका हूँ। तो मुझे साइबेरियन हस्की मुझे पसंद है क्योंकि इनके मतलब आप कहो कि बहुत ही पुरानी ब्रीड है बहुत एंशियन ब्रीड है ये और वुल्फ से डिराइव्ड है बट इनका कोई भी एक्टिविटी ऐसा नहीं है कि ये खतरनाक होते हैं या काटते हों इसलिए मुझे ये बहुत ही ज़्यादा पसंद है आपका जैसे मैं फियोना को कहीं छोड़ के भी जाता हूँ आज के रेट में तो आपका पर डे वन थाउजेंड करीब पड़ता है तो आप सोच सकते हो अगर आप बोर्डिंग में भी रख रहे हो जिसमें फूड आप खुद दोगे प्लस बोर्डिंग के चार्जेस तो ये चीज़ें ही बढ़ा रहा है और बहुत सारे आजकल लोगों ने ना घर में रखना शुरू कर दिया है जब बोर्डिंग तो आपके घर की फैमिली की इकॉनमी भी बढ़ रही है इससे क्योंकि क्या होता है लोग केजेस में रख देते हैं कहीं सेल्टर्स में रख दिया ऐसा रख दिया बट आजकल लोग क्या करें घर के अंदर पाले क्योंकि हमारे पास एक है तो हम चलो दूसरे के हेल्प करते हैं उससे हमारी इकॉनमी बढ़ रही है हमें पैसे भी आ रहे हैं घर में चार पैसे आ जा रहे हैं तो इस तरह से लोग सोच रहे हैं कि अगर लोगों के पास पेट्स होंगे तो हमारे लिए अच्छा है बीगल्स जैसे स्मॉल ब्रीड का आपको 800 हंड्रेड टू सेवन हंड्रेड प्राइसेज होते हैं डे केयर में और 1000 से 1200 हंड्रेड बड़ी ब्रीड्स के होते हैं ऑफकोर्स जितनी फैसिलिटीज दी जाती है उस हिसाब से चीज़ें बढ़ती हैं Today, keeping pets has not just become a hobby but a status symbol for the people. Therefore, they often spend handsome money on their maintenance. Often, the ownership of foreign breeds is widely preferred over domestic one, which again translates to an increase in expenditures on pets, leading to rapid surge in the growth of pet care business in the country. इंडिया में अब पेट्स के अलावा अब पेट्स के पेट्स में डॉग्स एंड कैट्स के अलावा काफ़ी तरह के पेट्स आ रहे हैं लोग कैट्स फिशेस, बर्ड्स हैमस्टर्स गिने पिग्स काफ़ी पेट्स रखना पसंद करते हैं और अलग अलग पेट्स के हिसाब से अलग अलग घरों की रिक्वायरमेंट है जैसे जो लोग जिन लोगों के पास बड़ा घर है वो डॉग्स रख पाते हैं जिन लोगों के पास छोटा घर है वो कैट्स रख पाते हैं जिन लोग जो लोग समय नहीं दे पाते ज़्यादा अपने डॉग्स या कैट्स को या अपने पेट्स को वो थोड़े से कंफर्टेबल पेट्स रख लेते हैं जैसे कि फिशेज हो गई जिनको कम मेंटेनेंस चाहिए इंडिया में सबसे तेज़ी से बढ़ रही है सत्रह परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर बढ़ रही है पेट्स की मार्केट चाहे वो आप फूड की बात करें चाहे आप पेट हेल्थ केयर की बात करें The rapid urbanization and rise in disposable income of people is also considered one of the reasons responsible for an increase in pet ownership as cats and dogs have become a part and parcel of every household. Moreover, India is regarded as one of the fastest growing pet care markets in the world. As recording to a report, every Indian spends an average of 4 to 5000 rupees monthly on their pets. Which encompasses things like their food, medicines, clothes, and toys. Pet grooming business is emerging as an influential market in pet care. It was earlier prevalent only in foreign countries, but now it is growing rapidly in India as well. At the same time, several big entrepreneurs are emerging in this market with pet-related products in diverse ranges. I talk about their food and vaccination. तो ये सबसे अच्छा पेट होता है क्योंकि आप मेट्रो सिटीज़ में हैं कि लोगों के पास स्पेस नहीं होता है रखने का तो सबसे बेस्ट तरीका है कि वो कैट रखें कैट का खर्चा भी मैक्सिमम महीने का एक हज़ार से पंद्रह सौ रुपये मैक्सिमम खर्चा आता है The rising pet ownership is also leading to a surge in pet-centric TV shows and programs while creating a celebratory atmosphere for animal lovers. These shows often demonstrate deep bond between people and their pets. Additionally, these programs also serve as a platform for pet businesses to present their latest products. Uh, I 
अलग अलग शेप्स के टॉयज अलग अलग मटेरियल के बने हुए कपड़े वो लोग अपने पेट्स के लिए क्वालिटी चाहते हैं जिस पर पहले इतना फोकस नहीं था The pet industry is thriving due to a growing appreciation for pets and evolving consumer trends. This presents exciting investment opportunities as the industry expands to meet pet owners' needs. And now we bring you some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. The Japanese government is keen to inherit traditional culture in tandem with the spread of Japanese cuisine. To promote its culinary customs and culture, the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries held a number of events in Kyoto to promote their country to international chefs. Alongside the globalization of Japanese cuisine comes the important topics of inheritance and penetration of traditional Japanese meal preparations. Shokado lunch box is a popular meal which includes five elements of Japanese food cooking. Culling, boiling, baking, steaming and frying are the skills that comprise the preparation process. The participants included two chefs who had won European and Asian competitions. Yoshihiro Morata gave them a positive evaluation of their work. あの盛り付けも綺麗にまとまってる。ごちそうさんでした。美味しかったです。この日の通し加減がこの新庄も火が通ってなかったです。この芋もダメでしたね。うん、これからもっと頑張ります。はい、ごちそうさんでした。Three foreign chefs who learned for six months in Japanese representative restaurants participated in a certification exam. based on the guideline of cooking skills established by Japan's Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. In this exam treatment skill and sanitary keeping are important. Additionally, treatment of fish porgy and arrangement for dishes are highly evaluated. Japanese cuisine experts will continue to uphold tradition and culture as long as Japanese cuisine spreads throughout the world. A Lunar New Year ceremony was held recently in Yokohama's Chinatown. Japan was closed to outsiders until 1859 when its harbor at Yokohama was first opened to them. And after 6 years with the cooperation of Japanese people, the mobilized Chinese established Chinatown in Yokohama to formally declare their existence. The Lunar New Year ceremony in China is still observed in a traditional manner. Moreover, the ceremony's chairman is Japanese. 今回の場合はあの龍舞があの行われます。まあ今年は辰年ということで、龍を一つのモチーフにして、この龍舞をもっともっと皆さんに見ていただこうと。中国の服、あのチーパオって言うんですけど、そういったチーパオの服を着た女性たちが歩いたりだとか、まあこの中華の文化や伝統を多くの方にその見ていただければというふうに思っています。The Chinese Lunar New Year event started in 1865. Its goals are to unite old-time Japanese residents and mobilize Chinese in wishing each other a happy new year. The harmonization of people of different nationalities grew larger as history progressed. Japanese and Chinese languages were spoken during the event as a symbol of understanding and coexistence, and the beautiful city of Yokohama produce this historical feat The government of India has launched several development schemes in the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir to support farmers and the youth The Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada scheme launched by the government has encouraged many farmers and the youth in the far flung Kotaranka Buddhal area of Rajouri district to take up fish farming as a potential source of income to make their ends meet several youths and farmers have turned to trout fish farming in the area and the sector is becoming highly popular source of income in the region we have a report many traditional farmers and the unemployed youth in the kotranka budhal area of rajouri district 
are finding fish farming a potential source of income. Under the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Scheme and Holistic Agricultural Development Program, farmers living in the remote areas of the Union Territory are receiving assistance and a 50% subsidy for setting up trout fish farming units in their localities. The local farmers were thankful to the government and the fisheries department for introducing them to this potential business avenue. अपने डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिशरी का शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहता हूं जिसने हमारी हमें इस स्कीम से तारीफ करवाया उसके बाद मैं गवर्नमेंट इंडिया का और स्पेशली मोदी जी का शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहता हूं जिन्होंने हमें ये स्कीमें दी जिसके तहत आज हमने अपना ये ट्रोट फार्म तैयार किया जो अभी तैयार नहीं हुआ लेकिन जल्दी तैयार हो जाएगा There are many farmers and the youth who have turned to the business of trout fish farming after getting encouraged by their peers and government officials who are running door-to-door -door campaigns to provide knowledge about government schemes in the sector. इन्होंने ये हैचरी का सिस्टम भी दिया है बायोफ्लाक का दिया है तो ये सारे सिस्टम जो है अब वजीर आजम साहब ने डोर टू डोर हर आदमी को हर आदमी बना सकता है उसके लिए अच्छा खासा पैसा रखा है अब सिर्फ ग्राउंड पे वर्क करना पड़ेगा मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी तो इसमें नौजवानों के अंदर बड़ी खुशहाली आई है नौजवान हमारे पास हर वक्त आते रहते हैं बड़ी अवेयर ले रहे हैं और कैसान भी आ रहे हैं यानी मेरे ख्याल में तो ये बड़ी बहुत बहुत अच्छा स्टेप है Government's Holistic Agriculture Development Program in rural districts of Jammu and Kashmir has helped a large number of farmers and youth to open trout farms in their localities. The farmers taking benefit from the centrally sponsored program are making good income in trout fish business. They sell their produce in not only the union territory but also other states of the nation. Given the environment and the running stream temperatures in the valley, trout fish can breed in large quantities and raise ways make it further suitable for farmers for maintaining higher densities of fishes in the raceway tanks. The government also provides free training to the farmers and youth who are interested in pisciculture. Through the launch of several schemes and skill development programs, the government aims to develop entrepreneurial culture among the youth and the society. The people in the union territory too are resonating with the goals of the government and embracing growth in every aspect of their lives. That's all we have for you this week. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.